ho ho lovelies, let's make some holiday hunger crushing combos. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today we are back with another episode of turning your trigger foods or fear foods into hunger crushing combos. Holiday edition. First guys, I want to jump in here for a hot minute to talk about my sponsor Squarespace. So if you're not familiar, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build a website, blog, online store, or just use their marketing tools and analytics. They have so many new awesome features that are just perfect for new entrepreneurs and hobbyists who are looking to get their passion out into the world. So for example, if you want to blog, they have an easy integrated commenting system and blogging tools for sharing and scheduling scheduling posts. If you're super into your Instagram or Facebook, you can sync those up with your website to make sure everything works together seamlessly. They also have all of your analytics there so you can see how your site is performing and then adjust your content strategy based on your stats. Honestly, I wish this kind of support was available when I was just starting blogging like a decade ago because it would have saved me so much energy, money, and time. But if you're interested in getting started, you can check out Square squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Abby Sharp to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. So I surveyed you on your holiday related fear foods or trigger foods, things that really made you feel uneasy or like you were going to overeat or binge on during the holidays. And I want to show you how to turn them into hunger crushing combos. Yes, you got this. I am feeling festive and I am very hungry, so let's do it. Okay, so first things first, I want to share with you how I put together an inherently balanced holiday meal. Because I know a lot of you guys think about holiday foods as being super indulgent or junk or bad, but I want you to change your perspective for a second because I actually see a lot of inherent balance. I see a hunger crushing combo. I see a lot of beautiful color. And honestly, it looks delicious. I'm like, my mouth is water. Mm. Let me show you what we're working with. We've got lots of protein in our turkey or whatever kind of protein you guys serve for your holiday feast. We've got uh, fiber in our potatoes and our squash and our green beans and in our cranberry sauce. Um, we've got some fats in the gravy and there's probably lots of butter in there for good measure. I don't know. It looks like a hunger crushing combo to me. It looks like color. It looks like variety. It looks like tons of nutrition and love and joy and pleasure and fun and family. And oh, I love the holidays, but I'm ready for dessert. So let's talk about some of your traditional trigger foods or holiday fear foods and how I'm going to turn them into hunger crushing combos. Let's do it. All right, lovers. Now this is a sensitive topic. But does anyone remember my holiday prep video from last Christmas? You know, the time that I attempted and failed pretty hard at assembling this? Well, she's back to haunt me. because a lot of you told me that cookies, specifically gingerbread cookies and gingerbread men or women cookies or people cookies were a trigger food for you. And I gotta tell you, they are a trigger food for me too at this point, not because of the calories or the sugar or the fat, but because their decoration and assembly like haunts me. I just feel like such a failure in life. I can't even put together a friggin' gingerbread house. But I would just like to draw some attention to the false advertising here. It says easy build, if you can see that. It was not easy, all right? Okay, so, so what? I did not follow instructions at all, nor did I acknowledge the easy roof builder until basically I had already attempted and failed at the project. But we're just gonna keep it simple today and stick to decorating the gingerbread cookie and then doing what I'm actually good at, which is turning it into a hunger crushing combo. Big breath in. 
I'm ready. <laughs> run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. You're a monster. So I feel like the first step is to get into this package somehow. They have really put a child lock on this. All right. Here is our one lone gingerbread person. And I'm just gonna stick to this because this proved too much for me last year. Oh dear, this is sad. Not a great start. Not a total Betty, but a vast improvement. Well, we All right, let's make a dip. Dip me! All right, let's make a little pumpkin pie dip. Not gonna measure this. We got some pure pumpkin puree. Hear that? That's a gross sound. Oh my God, God. really? Oh my God. Got some vegan cinnamon spice protein powder here. Get a little bit more. But you could totally use like a vanilla, just like keeping it super simple as well. And then a little bit of plant-based yogurt. Any kind of yogurt will work. I'm gonna give this a stir. Add a little more cinnamon. And if you wanna sweeten it up a little bit more, you can add some maple syrup. You like sugar, huh? Is there sugar in syrup? And I always like to add a little pinch of salt and just a little vanilla as well, just to add, bring out that flavor. All right, and to finish it off, I've got some hemp hearts, of course, and some toasted pumpkin seeds. Yum. Alrighty, folks, let's talk about this gorgeous snack platter. I mean, you could totally serve this for guests. So we got our gingerbread person. We've got loads and loads of fiber in the pumpkin puree, as well as in all the fruit we're gonna serve on the side. We've got protein in the protein powder. We've got healthy fats in my seeds and my, my pumpkin seeds and my hemp hearts. Mm. I'm excited to dig in. Though I have to tell you that I'm kind of sad to see this person go. Should we do the head? Are we barbaric like that? We are. Gotta get a good dip. I could make a really terrible sex joke right now about this, but I'm just gonna dig in. Mm. The dip actually makes this very, very stale cookie edible. It like softens it up a little bit. I might just lick off the, the dip. Fruit's probably a better option. Mm. This one is for my hubs, uh, eggnog. He's obsessed with eggnog. and he's specifically obsessed with Starbucks eggnog latte. So he was very upset when we found out a couple of weeks ago that they have discontinued the eggnog latte. What kind of Grinch move is that? <laughs> so anyways, he was very excited when he saw that this made an appearance in the grocery order this week. He's not gonna be so happy when he finds out that there's not a whole lot left tomorrow for his latte because I'm turning it into a hunger crushing combo. Good for you, not so much for him. Let's do it. So we are gonna turn this into an eggnog chia pudding and she gonna be good. Throwing down some chia seeds. I'm not gonna measure this, but I'm just gonna eyeball. It's about a one to four ratio chia to liquid situation. And I find that the eggnog it honestly, we don't even need that much of it to impart a ton of flavor. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that. I'm gonna do a little bit of this kind of protein, almond milk, cashew milk situation. Give it a little stir, maybe a little cinnamon. Just to, I guess I'm at the end of that. And then I like to do just a little bit of Greek yogurt for some extra protein. Um, but you could also leave this out if you didn't want to.
All right, little magic of television. She is ready to eat. All right, first we're gonna get in there very dangerously. Oh, with some pomegranate and oh, she is a beaut. Oh yeah, that is gonna go right on top of that chia pudding. And I'm going to be very careful because I'm wearing white. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? <gasps> very carefully. Who do I think I am? Do I think I'm invincible? Like this is, this is living on the edge in a white shirt. Oh my goodness. How am I going to get through this? Lots of paper towel. Lots of paper towel. All right, chia pudding down. Oh yeah. You guys can't smell this, but it smells like the holidays because that eggnog is so, so potent. A little goes a long way. Very carefully. Very, oh my goodness. I'm so scared. I just want to take my shirt off right now. I probably should, but I might get demonetized. <laughs> and some toasted coconut. Guys, I thought I got away unscathed, but I was wrong. I don't know if you can see this, but this a tiny little red dot and another one here and another one here. And now, just like that, this recipe is gonna cost me like $50 in dry cleaning. But what would I wear? But alas, it was worth it. So let's talk about this. We've got, ooh, in that chia pudding, hello. We got protein, fiber, and healthy fats in chia seeds. We got some fats in the coconut plus fiber. We've got fiber in the pomegranate. We've got some more protein in the Greek yogurt. <gasps> and I mean, let's not forget, there's actually a little bit of protein in eggnog as well. So. I don't feel bad about this. Oh my goodness. Ooh, 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 ooh. Jingle bells. Mm. Oh my God. The whole family is gonna love this. My kids are going to freak out. This is going in rotation all year long. All right, folks, candy canes. So these just, you know, taste, smell, look like the holidays to me. Uh, I just hear sleigh bells jingling, ring ting, tingling when I see a candy cane. Anyone else? Uh, but I have to be honest, I don't love them. Something about toothpaste flavored candy to me doesn't really toot my horn, I don't know. But my husband loves candy canes and now my son who just was introduced to candy canes because I had them in the house for this video, he also is now loving the candy canes. But we're gonna turn these candy canes into a hunger crushing combo. Uh, this could be a meal, this could be a snack, this is just gonna be delicious. So we're gonna make my sheep pan protein pancakes, candy cane edition, let's do it. Okay, so I've just got some cottage cheese here and we're gonna puree that until it gets nice and smooth. Okay, so my kid, my baby is sleeping right now and I have to tell you that every second that the food processor or the blender is blending, my heart is like beating out of my chest, being like, don't wake him up, don't wake him up, don't wake him up. It is riveting. Okay, so I've got a bowl of some oat flour. You can use whole wheat flour as well. I'm gonna pop that into here. And in another edition of Mommy Heart Attack, we're gonna take some very ripe bananas and we're gonna puree that in as well. And I've also got some from the freezer. I've got lots of ground flax here. It's about right. Bunch of eggs. Got some baking powder, some vanilla, lots of cinnamon, salt. I got lots of hemp hearts. You guys know I love hemp hearts. And now we mix everything together. All right, now we're just going to pour this down on a greased baking sheet. Give it a nice spread out all to the edges. Now we have some fun. 
Lots of mini dark chocolate chips. And then our crushed candy canes. Top it off with a little more hemp hearts. This is going into a 425 degree oven for about 12 minutes. How fun is this? Ho, ho, ho. All right, let's review. So we've got protein in the cottage cheese. We've got fiber in the oat flour. Plus of course we've got like hemp hearts in here as well. Got some healthy fats in all of our hemp hearts and our flax. And we got la candy canes. Ho, ho, ho. I'm excited about this. These totally don't need extra maple syrup if you don't want to add it because they are so sweet from the candy cane and the chocolate, but you know, why not? I nailed it guys. I nailed it. Mm. Mm. All right, loves, let's have some pie. American pie. Canadian pie? Could be any kind of pie. In this case, we're doing apple pie, but I totally get that everyone has their own like holiday pie traditions. But pie was definitely a common holiday fear food that came up uh, when I asked you guys for your recommendations. Now, full disclosure, I do not like pie. Why? 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 Yeah. Well, I like pie filling, but I don't like pie crust. So when I'm gonna eat a pie, I always wanna have like a graham cracker crust or like a chocolate cookie crust or something that's like not a traditional pie crust. But I'm doing this for you because I love ya. So we're gonna make this apple pie a little more abbey-fied with some really great add-ins that I actually really love that also happen to make it a hunger crushing combo. Let's do it. So I suppose I don't need a whole pie. So we'll just give ourselves a generous slice here. I've got some really good aged cheddar here. And you know, it is actually a classic pairing to do apple pie with cheese, with cheddar cheese, because it is like a sweet and salty combination that just hits right. So I'm gonna throw a lot of this on top. All right, we got a mountain of cheese here, nice. I'm gonna stick it in the microwave, but you could also totally just pop this in the oven. Oh, now that's a pie I wanna eat. Now while it, it's still warm, I'm gonna add some pecans for like a cheesy, crunchy pecan top. Poppy smells the cheese. Do you smell the cheese, Poppy? She smells the cheese. All right, let's talk about it. So we've got our apple pie. We've got protein and some fats in the cheese. We got protein, fat, and fiber in the nuts. We've got some fiber in the apples. Let's not kid ourselves. We can at least throw our apple pie that little bone. And look how much better it looks. Like I would serve that to guests. There's a cheese pull and nuts. Mm-hmm. She good. Okay, so how many of you have this same memory that I have? When I was a kid, we used to go to my grandparents' house and one of my favorite things at the holidays was to bust into their kind of like cheap drugstore chocolate box and get to take out the old chocolate menu. Remember one of these? This is a fancy one. I really went all out, guys. I went all out. This is no pot of gold. This is a Ferrero Rocher themed box of chocolate. So these are all premium, premium delights. A fine assortment of chocolate, as they say. So anyways, I used to get to bust out the little chocolate menu and select my chocolate of the day. And I'm like a caramel girl, so I'd always go for the caramel ones, or my favorite are the maraschino cherry ones. I don't think they have this there. 
travesty. But anyways, they do have a caramel one and a hazelnut one, which I feel like that's Ferrero Rocher's game. So we're gonna go with that one and make it into an amazing hunger crushing combo. Let's do it. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> how classy. You gotta get the little plastic topper to lock in the freshness. That way that they can keep it on the shelves for like three years and not just one. Okay. So, uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the, this one looks inviting. What's inside? Let's take a look. Okay, so according to this menu, this one is the milk cupola, a feather light mousse surrounded by rich milk chocolate decorated with a dark chocolate flourish. Ooh, sounds decadent. I'm excited for this one. Like really excited for this snack. This is gonna be good. So we got some whole grain wrap here. We're going to get in there with some almond butter. You could use peanut butter, whatever butter you like. And I'm getting near the end here. A little action here. This is like our glue. We've got fresh pear. I'm gonna slice that. Apple would also work great or any fruit really. But pear is a really nice high fiber option. And it's seasonal. And just like that. Let's throw down some hemp hearts because they go on everything. Now our chocolate. We're gonna do dark on one, milk on the other. And I'm just gonna slice it. Oh yeah. Just like that. Check out that special, luxurious, rich mousse. Dollar store special, folks. Can't go wrong. Then we wrap just like this. Let's serve them up. All right, I'm just gonna top mine off with a little bit of Greek yogurt and a sprinkle of cinnamon and a little bit of pumpkin seeds for good measure. So it doesn't matter if you are team dark chocolate or milk chocolate, your girl has something for you. So let's break it down. We've got loads of fiber in the whole grain tortilla. We've got healthy fats, fiber, and protein in the almond butter. We've got some uh, pumpkin seeds on top. We've got extra protein in the Greek yogurt, more fiber in the pear. <gasps> like, it's a match made in heaven. And you can kind of switch it up for flavor depending on what chocolate truffle you choose from the chocolate truffle box. <clears throat> Ooh! Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a truffle by the toe. Mm. This snack is a year long snack. We got the crunch, we got the sweet, got the soft, you got the. Mm. Yes. Well folks, I hope that gave you a lot of great inspiration on how to incorporate your fear foods into everyday balanced meals and snacks. If you guys like this video, please be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on some of your fear foods or trigger foods and how you'd like to see me turn them into hunger crushing combos. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Happy holidays, bye.